Little Fox. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Chapter Five: Trapped on the River. At last, Dorothy and her friends exited the forest. In front of them lay open land and a river with a powerful current. The Tin Man eyed the river. How will we cross that river? He asked his friends. Oh, that's easy," said the Scarecrow. "You will cut some logs, and we will build a raft." With the Tin Man's axe, the Lion's strength, and the Scarecrow's encouragement, a raft was soon built. "How will we steer the raft?" asked Dorothy. "We'll make long poles," replied the Scarecrow. "We will push the raft across the river." Careful! Shouted the Tin Man to the Lion. If I fall into the river, I'll rust for sure. Sorry, said the Lion. Use the poles to push us off, said the Scarecrow. They all pushed hard and were soon making their way across the river. The Tin Man looked nervous. This isn't good, he said. No, not at all, said the Scarecrow. What's wrong? Asked Dorothy. If the river takes us any farther down river, answered the Tin Man, we'll be in trouble. Yes, said the Lion, who was starting to cry. <laughs> It'll take us to the Wicked Witch of the West. She'll kill us for sure. Oh no! Exclaimed Dorothy. Cried the scarecrow suddenly. Everyone looked and realized the scarecrow was no longer on the raft. He was holding onto his pole in the middle of the river. What should we do? Shouted Dorothy. Goodbye! Shouted the scarecrow, waving from the pole. The Tin Man began to cry. Stop! Said Dorothy. Crying will make you rust, and that will make a bad situation worse. The Tin Man dried his eyes on Dorothy's dress. We must get across, or we are doomed," said the Lion. "I can swim, but you must hold my tail and pull the raft." What should we do now?" said the Tin Man when they had reached shore. "We must get back to the road," said Dorothy. We should follow the river upstream," said the lion, shaking himself dry. "It will take us back to the road." Look," said the Tin Man, pointing to the Scarecrow perched upon his pole. "How can we save him?" asked Dorothy. "Well, if one of you could fly." It would be easy," said the scarecrow. Just then, a great white stork flew overhead. "Mr. Stork!" shouted the Tin Man. "It's Mrs. Stork," said the stork, annoyed. "Oh, don't listen to the Tin Man," said Dorothy sweetly. "I can see you are a wonderful mother." "Why, yes, I am," said the stork happily. And who are you? I'm Dorothy, and these are my friends. We are on our way to see the Wizard of Oz," she said. "I see," said the stork. "But this isn't the road to Oz." "I know," said Dorothy. "Our friend needs our help, but none of us can fly." "I can fly," said the stork proudly. "Could you help our friend?" Asked Dorothy. He looks heavy," said the stork. "Oh no, he's very light," replied Dorothy. "He's made of straw." The stork flew to the scarecrow, grabbed him with her claws, and easily brought him to shore. "Thank you," said the scarecrow, happy to be back with his friends. "That's all right," 
said the stork. I like to help people who are in trouble. Now I must return to my babies. Have a good trip to Oz. Dorothy and her friends waved goodbye as the stork flew away. Look! shouted the lion. There's the yellow brick road! Let's get back to the road, said Dorothy happily. She started to run, and her friends followed her. Soon Dorothy stumbled because she felt sleepy, but she did not get up. Dorothy, what's wrong? asked the tin man. It's the flowers, said the lion sleepily. They're, they are magic and make people sleep forever. Don't you fall asleep too, said the scarecrow to the lion. You are too big for us to carry. Get out of here as fast as you can, the tin man told the lion. We will bring Dorothy. The lion tried to run, but he soon fell asleep. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Chapter 6, Queen of the Field Mice The lion fell asleep too, said the tin man. The scarecrow nodded. I'm sorry to leave him here, but we'd better take Dorothy to safety. We can't be far from the road, said the tin man. As soon as he spoke, the road seemed to appear. Will Dorothy sleep forever? asked the tin man impatiently. I don't know, said the scarecrow. I wish I had a brain so I could think of a way to help the lion too. Suddenly, a large cat came bounding out of the woods. It was chasing a tiny gray field mouse. As the mouse ran by, the tin man raised his axe and shouted, Stop! The cat saw the tin man and froze. Just as the Tin Man swung his axe, the cat jumped and ran back into the woods. Thank you for saving my life, said the mouse. Don't mention it, said the Tin Man. I have no heart, so I am careful to help everyone, even a mouse. Even a mouse, she said indignantly. Why, I am the queen of all the field mice. Oh said the Tin Man, as he noticed her crown and several other mice behind her. You have saved my life, said the Queen. I owe you a favor. Just then, Toto woke up and barked, causing the mice to run. The Tin Man took Toto in his arms. Come back, come back. Toto will not hurt you, shouted the Tin Man. I promise, Toto won't hurt you. Are you sure he will not bite us? asked the queen. I won't let him, said the tin man firmly. The mice returned and the biggest mouse looked at the tin man and asked, How can we repay you for saving the queen? We need help rescuing a friend, said the scarecrow. We are small, said the queen. How can we help? Are there many of you? asked the scarecrow. Yes, there are thousands of us, answered the queen. Bring them all, and a lot of string, said the scarecrow. Now Dorothy woke up and walked over to her friends. Tin Man, said the scarecrow. I need you to build us a cart so we can carry the lion on it. The Tin Man began to chop down trees and make the cart. Soon the mice returned, and there were many thousands of them. The Scarecrow and the Tin Man pushed the lion onto the cart. Okay, he's on, shouted the Tin Man. Pull, shouted the Queen to her subjects. Slowly at first, and then more swiftly, the cart began to move. If you ever need us again, just come to the field and call, said the queen. We will hear you. Soon the lion began to stir. I ran as fast as I could, but the flowers were too strong, 
he murmured. How did you move me? The scarecrow and the tin man explained that the mice had saved him. The lion laughed. <laughs> I have always thought myself very big and terrible, yet flowers almost killed me and some mice saved my life. I wonder if we are close to Oz, said Dorothy. I don't know, said the scarecrow. But there is one way to find out. The group happily returned to the road, and they were relieved because they thought they had left their adventures behind them. We must be in the land of Oz, said Dorothy. Yes, said the scarecrow. The favorite color here seems to be green, as it probably is in the Emerald City. It is getting dark, said Dorothy. We will need to stop for the night. At the next farmhouse, Dorothy bravely knocked. Yes, said the woman at the door. Can we spend the night? asked Dorothy. That depends. Is your lion tame? asked the woman. Oh, yes, said Dorothy. He is a coward and wouldn't hurt a fly. Okay, said the woman. You may stay here tonight. Where are you headed? We are going to see the Wizard of Oz, answered Dorothy. I don't think you will see the wizard, said the woman. I have been to the Emerald City many times, and I have never seen him. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Chapter 7, The Emerald City Dorothy pointed to some bright lights in the distance. That must be the Emerald City, she said. We'll reach it by noon, said the Scarecrow. As they walked, their excitement and fear grew. They were excited because the answer to their dreams was in sight. But they were worried because of what the woman had told them. She had never seen the Wizard of Oz. When they reached the city, they found the gate locked. Dorothy rang the bell. A man appeared and asked, what do you want? We have come to see the Great Oz, answered Dorothy. The man was so surprised by the answer that he fell down. No one sees Oz, said the man. He is a powerful and terrible wizard, and he dislikes being bothered. We won't be a bother because our need is great, said the Scarecrow. We have heard that the Great Oz is good, added Dorothy. I will take you to his palace, said the man. But you must wear these tinted glasses. Tinted glasses? asked Dorothy. Yes, said the man. Without them, you would be blinded by the brilliance and brightness of the Emerald City. Before Dorothy and her friends entered the city, each was fitted with tinted glasses, even Toto. The man led them to a great palace in the center of the city. Here are strangers, he said to a soldier. They demand to see the Great Oz. The soldier nodded. Step inside. I will take your message to Oz. With that, he disappeared for a long time. Have you seen Oz? asked Dorothy when he returned. No, replied the soldier. I've never seen him. But I spoke with him. He will see each of you alone, and just one of you a day. You must wait in the palace until he calls you. Now you can go to your rooms. Follow me, a girl said to Dorothy. I will show you to your room. Dorothy followed the girl, who took her to a beautiful room with a fountain. Oh, it is lovely, said Dorothy. Make yourself at home, said the girl. Oz will send for you tomorrow. The next morning, the girl returned, and she helped Dorothy dress. She even tied a green ribbon around Toto's neck. Are you really going to see Oz? asked the girl shyly. Of course, 
said Dorothy, if he will see me. The girl led Dorothy through the palace. What is your business? demanded the soldier who stood outside the throne room. Dorothy was quite surprised. I am here to see Oz, she said uncertainly. I spoke to you yesterday. Will he see me? He will, said the soldier. He is not happy about it, but I told him about the silver shoes on your feet and the kiss upon your forehead, so he agreed to see you. A bell rang. That is the signal, said the soldier. You must go into the throne room alone. Dorothy walked in as bravely as she could. The room was both strange and wonderful. It was made of emeralds, and the light shining from above made everything sparkle. The throne itself was the strangest thing in the room. It was bigger than any chair Dorothy had ever seen. Floating just above it was a giant head with no body. As Dorothy looked at the head, its eyes opened and began to stare at her. I am Oz, said the giant head. Who are you and why do you seek me? The voice wasn't as awful as Dorothy expected. So she bravely said, I am Dorothy from Kansas. I need your help. Before I help you, said Oz, you must answer some questions. Will you tell the truth? Yes, answered Dorothy, because she had no reason to lie. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz Chapter 8 The Quest Remember to answer truthfully, said Oz. Where did you get the silver shoes? I got them from the Wicked Witch of the East, said Dorothy. My house fell on her and killed her. How did that mark get on your forehead? asked Oz. That is where the Good Witch of the North kissed me, answered Dorothy. The eyes stared at Dorothy and said, You answered truthfully. What do you want? I want to go home, said Dorothy. I'm sure Aunt Em is worried about me. Why should I do this for you? asked Oz. Because you are a great wizard and I am only a girl, replied Dorothy. You were strong enough to kill the Wicked Witch of the East, said Oz. I didn't do it, said Dorothy. It just happened. In this country, you must help me before I help you, said Oz. You cannot expect to get something for nothing. What must I do, asked Dorothy. You must kill the Wicked Witch of the West. I can't, exclaimed Dorothy, surprised. You killed the Wicked Witch of the East, said Oz. You wear the silver shoes. They have powerful magic. There is only one wicked witch. When you can tell me she is dead, I will send you back to Kansas. Dorothy was disappointed and began to weep. You won't see your aunt and uncle again until the witch is dead, Oz continued. Remember, the witch is evil and should be killed. Now go! Don't ask to see me again! This is your quest. Complete it, and I will see you home. Dorothy left the throne room. She was surprised to see her friends waiting for her. What happened? asked the Tin Man. There is no hope, said Dorothy. Oz says I must kill the Wicked Witch of the West. If I don't, he won't help me. Her friends were sad and worried because they wondered what Oz would ask them to do. The Scarecrow saw Oz the next day. I am Oz. Who are you, and why do you seek me? asked the wizard. I am the Scarecrow, and I'm made of straw, said the Scarecrow. I want a brain instead of straw in my head. In this country, you must help me before I help you, said Oz. What must I do? asked the Scarecrow. You must kill the Wicked Witch of the West said the wizard. You asked Dorothy to do that, 
replied the Scarecrow. I did, said Oz. I don't care who kills her. Do it, and I will give you a brain. The Scarecrow was very disappointed. The Tin Man saw Oz the next day. I am Oz. Who are you, and why do you seek me? Asked the wizard. I am the Tin Man. I want a heart so I can love again, said the Tin Man. You cannot expect to get something for nothing, said Oz. What must I do? Asked the Tin Man. You must kill the Wicked Witch of the West, growled Oz. Help your friends in this quest, and I will give you a heart. The Tin Man was very disappointed, so he began to weep. The lion saw Oz the next day. I am Oz. Who are you and why do you seek me? Asked the wizard once again. I am the cowardly lion. I want courage so I am never afraid again. Answered the lion. In this country you must help me before I help you. Said Oz. What must I do? Asked the lion. Bring me proof that the Wicked Witch of the West is dead, and I will give you courage, said Oz. The lion ran from the room. Dorothy looked at her friends and asked, What shall we do? There's only one thing to do, said the lion. We must go to the West, continued the Tin Man. We must kill the Wicked Witch, finished the Scarecrow. But how? asked Dorothy nervously. I don't know, answered the Scarecrow. But I want a brain, and you want to go home. The Tin Man wants a heart, and the Lion wants courage. So we must complete this quest. Little Fox